While upgrading my personal gaming PC the other day with the new AMD Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, I suddenly had a realisation. Wait a minute, these new 7000 chips come with built-in graphics. So you know we have to see if we can game on it. So for those of you that don't know, this is my personal gaming PC. A week ago, it was running an AMD Ryzen 7 5800X3D with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 and an AMD Radeon RX 7900XT. Technically, at those specifications, it was kind of classed as mid-range really, it wasn't nothing special, but recently I've had a bit of an upgrade. I have upgraded this machine to the new AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D. And of course, I don't have the graphics card in here because today we're gonna to be testing to see what kind of gaming we can do on the built-in iGPU. The last time that we actually did a benchmark on an AMD Ryzen APU was of course the AMD Ryzen 5 5600G and that actually gamed pretty well. Unlike the previous generations of Ryzen's, particularly the APUs and the lower end 7000 series, the 7800X3D actually has a different type of onboard graphics. Instead of the traditional Vega graphics that you tend to see on a lot of the uh, AMD Ryzen processors, this one actually came with what they call Radeon graphics and it's actually using a brand new architecture. In comparison to the 5600G, the 7800X3D's built-in graphics doesn't actually look that great. It only has two compute units compared to the 5600G's 7, as well as only 128 shaders compared to the 5600G's 448, but it does have a higher clock speed and it can actually support up to four times of RAM, coming in at around eight gigabytes compared to the Vega 7's two gigabytes. But it's not always about the technical specifications on paper. The 7800 X3D of course uses an RDNA 2 architecture whereas the 5600G used the Vega 7. But will the new architecture actually make a difference? Well that's what we're going to find out today. We will be doing some comparisons to the games that we tested with the 5600G. Now with the 5600G the last time we tested it we did it with an array of kind of oldish games and a couple of kind of newish ones but we're not going to be retesting all of them today. But the first one that we are going to be testing or retesting is Doom Eternal. Then Doom Eternal is actually a very well optimized game and it pretty much runs on generally anything. We've had some great success with running this game on AP use with the 5600G actually getting around an average of about 34 frames per second. That is when running in a 1080p high setting. So that's exactly what we're going to configure here just to do a bit of a comparison. If we drop down into the settings, we can see what we've actually got configured. We'll go to video. So we do currently have a resolution of 1080p. Nothing else is fancy or enabled. And we've got an overall quality of high. So let's jump into the game. And then we'll see if it can actually maintain a similar kind of FPS. Now, as my save file seems to be at the beginning of the game, this is probably going to be one of the least demanding kind of sections. So take that into consideration while we look at this. But we actually do seem to be running around quite smoothly. We currently have an average FPS of 33 with a 1% low of 28. That's actually not too bad and pretty close to the 5600G's capability. We'll just go into the next room because there's a lot more going on in here and we'll see how low it actually drops. Would you want to actually play the game at this kind of setting? Probably not. You could slap in a very old graphics card or at least a very kind of entry level graphics card and get three times as much FPS as this. But if you are desperate and you only have this CPU, I think you could actually get away with playing this game. It is pretty smooth and it is kind of keeping up with the 5600G. We're now currently getting an average of 32 frames per second. So of course, Going into this room with a lot more enemies didn't really kind of affect it that much, but we can actually play this and it's perfectly fine. Now another game that we tried on the 5600G was of course Tomb Raider. This game is another very well optimized game and it's pretty old now so it kind of plays pretty much on anything. And for that one we got around an average of 54 frames per second on the 5600G's Vega 7. Can we actually achieve that now with the new AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D's built in iGPU? I'm not quite sure. I think we did really really well with Doom Eternal and it was kind of playable but let's jump into a game here with Tomb Raider and we'll see how well it actually goes. Before we actually do jump into the game we'll go and double check the options we'll go to graphic settings and we'll make sure that it's configured the same we are currently running in a resolution of 1080p with an advanced setting or overall quality of high that is exactly the same as what we did with the 5600g so let's jump into game and see how well it actually plays now tomb raider is actually a great game to actually test some of the older and more entry level items because it is extremely well optimized and it does seem to be performing pretty well even now this is probably one of the most demanding sections of any kind of level that i've seen on this game 
and I'm probably going to die quite a few times, but we'll see how far we can actually get. We are currently running at an average of 42 frames per second with a 1% low of 35. That does mean you're going to get a reasonably smooth experience. And for anybody that's happy to play at around 30 FPS, you could cap this off with a bit of V-Sync or frame rate limit and it would play absolutely smooth. I'm actually pretty impressed so far with what we've got running here, particularly with the uh, very low specifications of the built-in graphics on this. So it's actually looking not too bad. Playing with this kind of uh, frames will affect your gameplay a little bit, but probably not as much as uh, people think really. A lot of these single player style adventure games will generally play at very low FPS, particularly if you're gonna be able to cap it properly and get what you need it to do. So I think that's actually a bit of a success. We've managed to get this game to play. It is now currently running at an average of 41 frames per second with a 1% low of 34. So you're going to get be able to get away with this. I think you will be able to play this perfectly fine. Now with all APUs and iGPUs, we always love to test one game and that is a game that is generally very old and it performs exceptionally well on everything. And the reason that we do this is because if you are ever in the situation where you have an AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D and you are waiting for your graphics card or your graphics card breaks and you're looking for a new one, can you actually still use the machine? Now, I think the big benefit to having an iGPU inside a CPU is that actually you can. You can still use your machine for all of the different types of things that you can use them for. And it's always great to be able to still actually play a few games, even if they are a little bit older. And the game that we want to try is, of course, Half-Life 2. Now, for Half-Life 2, of course, this game is very old. It pretty much runs on everything. As you can see, we are running beautifully fine. The Ryzen 7 7800X3D's built-in iGPU is currently getting an average of 250 frames per second. That is absolutely fantastic. And the game looks stunning too. This is one of those games that actually just looks good no matter how old it gets. And as you can see, you can play it perfectly fine. This is currently running in 1080p with a high preset. So the settings are not really that kind of demanding, but I reckon we could actually just pump this up a little bit just to see if we can get it to run at a even higher resolution. Dropping into the settings, we'll just pop over into the video settings. As we can see, we do have the option to go to 1440p. So let's switch it up to 1440p and we'll see how well the game actually performs. Now in 1440p, as you can see, we're still currently getting over 100 frames per second, which is absolutely fantastic. I do absolutely love this game. It is one of my favorites to play, particularly when it came out new, but I do replay it now and again because I just thoroughly enjoy how good the game actually is. We're still getting around now 158 frames per second that will go up and down depending on where we are and what's going on but it is more than playable as anybody should expect and it really does give you an option if you are struggling without a GPU and you just want to play something fun. So as we can see the built-in graphics on the AMD Ryzen 7 7800XDD can actually game and they game reasonably well. Do they game as well as one of the AMD's older kind of APUs, the 5600G? Well, in Doom Eternal, it actually performed okay. It pretty much matched it. There was a couple of frames per second in it, so that wasn't too bad. In Tomb Raider, it was quite a bit lower. We managed to get an average before of around 54 frames per second. It was 54, 56 frames per second. And this time we only really kind of managed to get around 40. So in the older titles, it didn't do as well. But then when you go really old in games, it actually performed exceptionally well. Was that as good as a 5600G? I actually can't remember what we got on that. We don't tend to really remember when we can get, you know, in the hundreds of frames per second because it, it's just pointless really. But as you can see, you can actually play it. Are the built-in graphics on these processors really worth it? Well, yes, you can actually use them for a number of things. I actually completely upgraded my machine without inserting the graphics card at all with the built-in graphics. I managed to get it up and running, installed Windows, got all of my launchers back on there, pretty much got all of the motherboard drivers, the BIOS updated, all that kind of stuff and I didn't even need to touch my graphics card. So you actually kind of reduce the risk of breaking anything because you can do all that kind of work and then drop your graphics cards in later. I am now that the machine is tested and we know that we can actually game on the iGPU if we ever have any problems with our graphics card. I'm going to actually be installing my graphics card next and I'm gonna be catching up with that in another video. We're gonna be doing a comparison between what this machine was before and what it is now to see how much of an improvement I've got by actually upgrading the complete platform. I'm not not sure if I've actually got a lot but I'm sure we're seeing that one so make sure you subscribe to the channel 
if you want to catch that video. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the built-in graphics of the Ryzen 7 7800X3D. Do you have one of these processors or any kind of 7000 series X3D chip? Have you actually tested the graphics yourselves? What kind of games did you test and what kind of results did you get? I'd be really interested to know because I'm not really going to be testing this again for a while. And I'm sure as always, we will catch you guys in the next one.